And welcome back to the Renaissance, part six. It is currently 11 o'clock a.m. on June the 28th, 1495, Battle of Seminara. Um, and as we can see, it doesn't look good for the French. It doesn't look good at all. <clears throat> but by playing both sides, we realize that the uh, Kingdom of Naples has a bunch of, uh, what's the best way to say this, substandard military units. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, peasants that have been handed uh, weapons and said, let's go get them. And uh, they'd rather have a pitchfork. All right, so zooming in here. As the French, well, this is, we got problems. Not going to lie. We definitely got problems. But we are aligned. Unfortunately, we're disordered. And they're disordered. We have uh, the supply wagon. Let's, let's, uh, let's get that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, let, let's put that there for now. Um, yeah, yeah, and then down here, oh, well, we need to bring them back. First of all, Q, and C, oh, I'm turning them off, that's great, okay, so, these two units up here under this commander's control, command, I guess I should say. So we need to bring him back up. Wow. Well, we're not bringing the router units back up. <clears throat> well. Oh, no. I need to be in two places at once. I need to be in t okay, okay. Why don't we do this? No, to be the only way he helps the routed troops is if he's with them. But these guys are disordered, and uh, if they're not inside of his command range, they're going to have to roll ones to rally. If they are inside his, I mean, this guy one to four, he would rally. So. I guess we're going to have to make them the priority. And even he can't quite get there. Wow. Um, we could shift down. Could shift down. It's probably a good idea. Uh, now we're in their zone of control. No, he, well, he is though. He's in a lot of zones of control. So I assume when I move him, he'll just immediately lose all his movement. But we can move him down one, which would be, which would be great. So we're going to go like this, and we're going to see. So he still has movement because he wasn't in an enemy zone of control. This guy is. He's in a whole bunch of units zone of control. What happens when I move him down? It should go to, if I, what I think is correct, it should go to zero the movement. It does not. It does not. It goes to seven. Okay, so being in enemy zone of control, now, is there a reason? No, they're not disordered. They are. He is. So these three units were disordered. But these two were not. So yeah, I don't know why he still has, why did he, the last turn, the cavalry, when it moved, went to zero movement. But uh, this... These crossbow infantry, they did not. It's very weird. All right, well, they're going to shoot. We might as well shoot at these cavalry pieces. So we're disordered. Uh, that's going to be a hit on our uh, our fire, our strength for fire attack. And uh, we moved. That's another, I know that's a 50% hit. So we're not going to get a lot of casualties here. But let's see what we can get. Kill four of them. That's great. 
so eight eight cavalry that men that uh, were alive at the beginning of this video are now deceased and everybody is in his command radius even though I think the red units he has to be in the same hex to actually help them but I think these units these disordered uh, crossbow infantry they are our priority we would like to see them rally if at all possible Okay, and by doing moving back, we have it so these guys cannot flank us, do a flank attack. Only way they could is if they come into the woods, and the woods will disorder them, which will help. Now, these guys. We also have the pikemen, which we would love to have come up and just kill. Kill, kill, kill. So we're going to move these guys to the side. Now, he did go to zero right away. So I'm missing something here. Why did this unit, when it came down, is it because it didn't move into his zone of control? Is that why? Or is this guy, no, he's, well, yeah, yeah, he's in these guys' zone of control. So, and if you enter into his zone of control, you uh, you automatically lose all further movement. So why did this guy, when he moved up, but the other crossbow men were all facing away from him at the time. Why did he go zero last time? I don't know. Okay, so we're going to fire at these guys. Yes. Kill four men. Now we have the pikemen. They only have six movement. And if I move up, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that they'll change their facing. And I don't want to find out the hard way. So we're going to turn them uh, counterclockwise. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Don't you remember the way a clock goes? Come on. Ah, can we do an about face? We can. Can we move up? Nope. That's great. That's great. So no melee attack from the pikemen. Ah, damn it. Son of a... All right. So I don't think I can... No, see, I, I, if I, I keep remembering undo last movement. Too late. If I had done that immediately, I think I could have t taken that back. Uh, okay, well, at least they're covering this hex, right? I always look at the brighter side of life. And these guys can turn their facing once clockwise. And we could move up. Yeah, we could move up. It's here. Okay, we're going to move up. And we're going to shoot these halberds from behind. 21 men, ladies and gentlemen. 21 men. Good going. The fourth. I wish I could say that word. Ar Arb. L. Arb. Yeah. No. Can't say that. Uh, let's see here. Well, we want to move up to protect our guns, but our guns would like to fire. We look at here, we can see that we can see the Dragoons, and that's it. It's a range of uh, five. And if we look on our hand, what are these? These are Falcons. Oops. This. Uh, Falcons at a range of five. Well, unfortunately, we're one out of, this seems to be like the median range. If we were one closer at four, we, the damage would Output would have increased by 50%. But uh, beggars can't be choosers. So let's go over here. Let's get this so we're going back and forth to the right windows. Okay. So we're going to fire at the Dragoons. Here we go. All right. Seven men die. Our ammo is now down to 58. So we were at 60. Each shot from those two gun units takes an ammo away. All right, so let's, uh, we can highlight here, we can highlight uh, moved units, fired units. 
Um, okay. So let's go back. I think I can remember that. So this divisional commander, of course, is only actually responsible for this one here. Well, he can help with the uh, fire attack, but where do we want to attack? Do we want to keep hitting the Dragoons, try to disorder them? Remember, the more casualties we can inflict, the higher the chance that they'll have to do a morale check. <clears throat> but at a range of three crossbowmen, it's not worth it. Not worth shooting and running the chance of uh, having a running low on ammo, which now being turn five, is a definite possibility. I believe it's a 4% possibility, actually. Uh, so we're going to move up. We've got our line formed. And we could shoot, could move up and shoot point blank range at them. And then shoot at them again. Or we can just shoot at a range of two hexes. But two hexes. <sighs> Let's go, we go from 6 at 1 to 1 1.5 at 2. Do we want to close with those degrees? No. What is this? This is how. Yeah, we don't want to go there. We're just going to shoot from here. Now, they've moved, which is why they, these guys haven't moved as far as the game's concerned. So they do more damage. These guys didn't move, so we should be able to do more damage with them. And we do. Six. Alright, you really, we're, they're giving as good as they get, pretty much. Okay, uh, now what do we see here for, oh, there's a couple of mistakes I made. First of all, these guys were detached last time, and that was, wasn't because of the enemy units, I don't believe. That was because, uh, at the beginning of the turn, he was down here behind enemy troops, and they were still up here somewhere. So I'm still not sure if enemy troops zone of control uh, affects the command radius of a commander. The other mistake I made was these guns. I, was, I mistakenly said that, probably look like this. I mistakenly said that these were blocking the line of sight, but they're not. It's the actual slope of the hill that's causing us to not be able to uh, fire into those shaded hexes. So two mistakes, but uh, while rewatching the video, I caught them. Okay, so we fired. This guy has not fired. We can't see here. We can also see here. Range of two for both. Well, this is the stronger unit, so we'll attack here. Eleven men. Nice. What do we have here? 375 crossbows. Behind we have the guns. They're pointed this way. We're going to unlimber them. Now they're setting up. So we're going to have to wait till they're set up to be able to actually fire. But if we look at our... They can see all over the place here. So excellent spot for them. As long as the infantry in front of them hold and protect them, Everything's going to be just fine. Okay, so as far as I can tell, oh yeah, arrived. Let's get the pikemen on. Here they are. Look at the quality of these troops. A, A plus, A. And then they have this little plus two here, which... I'm not sure what that means. I know that fanaticism is a plus two bonus, but I don't see the words fanaticism anywhere on here. Ooh, and we have our first, uh, the new weapon. Well, it's not brand new. It's been around for a bit, but as far as this is the moment in history where the Arcubus becomes a... Uh, uh, it actually contributes to the battlefield in a meaning, meaningful way. So what do we got here? 800. These are huge troops. Pike. Melee 3. Block. 
A plus A. Like, look at these troops. Beautiful. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to pull back to the slope. Just a little bit of a slope. Uh, I'm not sure why the block, wouldn't the block be facing in all directions? But uh, I guess they're predominantly, their zones of control right now are in these two hexes. So I don't, I would think a block would have a zone of control in all the hexes around it, but I guess that's not how it works. And they only have a six movement. So even if we move here, and then we turn once, and that's all we can do. So we technically are only exerting a zone of control here and here. So this, they could flank us. So we're going to need to cover that. We're going to need to cover that. So we're going to come like this. And turn once. And then these guys are going to back up. And we're going to slowly come back to the hill. Uh, these supply wagons are going to move up here. Okay, I think that is the French. Everybody, let's check here. Highlight. Who's fired? All the units that can fire have fired. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, so the army commander, of course commands everything. Is there another commander? It's just the army commander. <clears throat> wow, look at his radius. So I guess that's to show that the uh, administrative capabilities of the Swiss army are way beyond the uh, other nations fighting right now on the battlefield. But that means that uh, we don't need to worry about becoming detached uh, like so much as the other these other uh, the other units do. Uh, all right, so we have the archibuses. So let's separate them. They're going to come up here. They have 18 movement, and we'll form them into a line. Okay. Uh, the army commander. I don't know. What do we have here? We don't need the supplies. 1,100 men. I think that's just below. Uh, we don't have to worry about stacking uh, mounts there. So we're going to come up. Now they're in column. And they had. I'm pretty sure we'd have to switch to block right here. I don't think we need to worry about that yet. I don't think. The, well, even if they could, they're only Stratiotes. I'm not too worried about it. So we'll go right here. Now, they could change the block, but I don't see the point yet. I might still need to do a bit of movement. The supply wagons, we'll put them here and here. They're nice and safe from any prying eyes. And then we have these guys. Can we make it up there? So we need nine to change the block. That's not going to happen this turn, but can do that and then on the other side we can go like that and I feel much better the French feel much better uh, that's gonna help immeasurably all right so that is it for the uh, French side we're now going to hit the button once we're gonna go to melee do we have any melees we want to do? I mean, I don't think that's a great idea, right? No. No, that's not a great idea. No, I don't think so. I don't think crossbowmen should ever be doing melee attack, unless it's like a, another crossbow unit that's disordered and you're flanking and run to the rear, or it's a routed unit. I don't think there'd be any other reason to do a melee attack with the crossbow. Uh, and we didn't get our pikemen up because of my uh, snafu, where I uh, changed direction the wrong way and then forgot to undo the movement. So it was too late. So, okay, we're heading on to the Kingdom of Naples. So it says reinforcements have arrived. 
10 units are undisordered out of the 13 units checked. That's because of yours truly making sure the commanders are in, they're all in the commander circle uh, radius. And zero units routed out of two units checked. So two units had a chance to route. I'm not sure there were a couple of disordered units, probably this one, maybe this one. But they didn't route, which is good. So here we are. We're going to do the reinforcements first. It's probably a good idea. So let's go to arrived, and oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Well, this is the bulk of the Spanish army, I would say. Oh, we have Archibus. Both sides now have some Archibus. Swords. Swords. Melee three, oh, that's good. What? I'll have to do a little research into swords. Uh, crossbow, Archibus again. All right, well, first things first. I mean, I can all uh, look at these. Sword, pike, we got 800 pikemen. Okay, so we want the divisional commander. Q, C. Uh, let's put him here for now. And then the brigade commander, he commands that, he commands that stack, he commands that. Who commands you? He does. Okay, well then we guess we're going to have to rush up. Let's get going. Make sure I have it selected. So he can get over across the stream. And then... Well, for now, we just want to move down as quickly as possible, don't we? So, let's go over there like that. And this divisional commander. Okay, so he just has to worry about the cavalry. Okay, so let's head down. We'll uh, organize them more a little bit later. Let's uh, move him here. Down they come. All right. Well, he's disordered, so I need the I need him to stay within range. And uh, of course, our brilliant flanking maneuver that we were about to do is no longer going to happen now that the Swiss are showing up there. We'll still try to flank, though. We're still going to try to flank. So, oh, well, I don't know. Reinforcements. Side A. They have something coming right there. So, <clears throat> and once again, if we had fog war on, I don't think I'd be able to know that. Um. Well, let's force them to deal with it, so that it takes some attention away from our main line. Well, I think that's that's Marsh. We don't want to go in there. Clockwise. Okay. And uh, the divisional commander, he can come down as far as he can. Should be there. Just to keep these guys in our command radius so we can help with their rallying. Okay. Now we're on to the main event. So now the Swiss have shown up. We need to get a move on here if we're going to do anything. So first of all, first of all, fatigue 233. So still no averse effects. Uh, can I highlight fatigue units? High fatigue units. So there is none. As of right now, nobody's over 300. I assume that's when we'll start showing up on that. So, okay, they're no longer detached. Do we turn around? Probably taking opportunity fire. No, we're disordered. 
I think we need to get him out of there. To let him rally. Uh, these are just worth too many victory points to be thrown away like that. We need to have it at full operational strength before we attack with it. So these these are junk troops, uh, but yeah, the Stradiots don't want to go there. They will not win. So we'll uh, the sort of troop we don't want. His command radius is there. Who's who's your commander? This guy. And his command radius is there. Well, we need to get through there, don't we? And I'm not sure what happens if I move into... Let's find out. Let's find out what happens when cavalry moves into the same hex as infantry in column. So they are not disordered. Do they become disordered? They do! So, yes, it always disorders. So you never want infantry and cavalry in the same hex together. Alright, we're going to continue to move up... <clears throat> and then we're going to turn around. So that would be counterclockwise that we'd want to turn. There we go. Now, these guys are disordered. These guys are disordered. This is my command range. So I could move them in. What do we got here? We got halberds. That uh, these are more, but it would be good to get them into combat with these guys so what's this that's a pikeman that's great if anything we want to back off i'd like to hit that crossbow though. so we're going to back off oh and then you are going to come in here like this and we should probably go down here to yeah I guess so. And we're going to melee the crossbowman. We could melee the pikeman, but I know how that will go. So let's try to do as much damage as we can. And then our commander wants to back off. But we don't want to be facing that way. No. I should have just done it in about face. Uh, let's go like that. Then we have our crossbowman. These guys are disordered. They don't want to close. They haven't fired, have they? And they cannot form a line. So this is this is what they can do. This is pathetic. That's what this is. No effect. That's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that worked out well. That worked out well. Okay. And please, somebody, tell me. Is, what? How am I supposed to do? I assume that they're not good for much, being only six victory points. And quality, they're just so poorly trained. It's like getting water from a stone, trying to get anything out of these pieces. Uh, the only thing I can think is skirmishers. That's that seems to be what you would do with them. Hmm. Wow. I always think about that when it's too late. But we got some more here. Do I move down skirmishers just to take shots from the? Uh, Crossbowman? It doesn't seem like... You can shoot through skirmishers, but you take a 20% uh, penalty to, for firing through them. So they are good for like softening the damage that's being done as you advance on uh, a position. But uh, I don't see the point right now. I don't think it's going to make much difference. Uh, these guys are basically in behind. So, what do we do with these? Can't go in the woods. We're in the way of the other units. We'll disorder everybody if we... It's just a mess. Just a mess. Could come down here, move him out of the way, and then get them out of there. Because I don't think they're going to do much good there. So, we're going to move down here like this. It's quite... In this column, let's let's move these guys so they're facing. I think they all have to be facing the same way, don't they? So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, counterclockwise. 
move these down with them. Yeah, yeah, that's great. We'll shoot, because why not, right? Kill a man. Damn right. Okay, and then uh, we're going to get the Stradiotes out of there. And move them back with their commander, which is here, right? Okay, what is... Yeah, okay. I don't see whether... <laughs> oh, God. Oh. oh, we want to get these guys down there, too. So I guess that's what we're going to do, is try to sneak these 800 halberds down. Oh, my. Let's send these guys down first. Since they're crap. I can actually go into the forest and not uh, not get disordered. Hey, that's good, right? And then we'll move these guys down. And that's that's all they're going to be able to go. See, uh, once you're in block, slow as molasses. <sighs> and as for this cavalry, I just don't know what to do with it. These cavalry are still disordered. Well, only one of them are. I'm not using these properly, though. This doesn't seem like a great area for cavalry. Okay, well, we'll leave these guys here. We'll leave them there. Uh, actually, it's with this guy. We'll leave them there for now. Uh, take a pot shot. Just seems like we'll, we'll lose. We'll lose, but oh, I don't see the point. How are we going to? Well, we're trying to get our halberd units in here to hit. We have a halberd unit here. Where's our other halberds? Here, but they're disordered. I don't. I think we want to be facing that way. We want to go counterclockwise there. Face these two hexes. Mm -hmm. Oh my, oh my, oh my. We do have a commander here. This doesn't seem right either. Seems like a lot of death. Well, we want to definitely shoot these guys. But we don't want to get next to them. Hmm. And that's almost. Yeah. That, that was a huge. Mistake. Okay, so then we have uh, Halberd. That's the only thing that's going to be able to stand up. <coughs> Actually, we want to head straight down and hit this. Uh, Hit these crossbowmen, but he's going to respond with the pike. Hey now. Actually, sure, shoot, waste your ammo. I don't think you should fire until you're at least two hexes away. I don't think we'll close. I'm just going to go like this. And then close. It should take a 20% drop, even if that still hurt. And if we move, oh, we can't move out of the way. <laughs> uh, so we'd have to shoot back over through our, pass through our skirmishers as well. We might as well, though. And at that, that's the moment where I realized that these are arquebus. I thought they were crossbow. Uh, okay. Don't seem to be, actually, I don't think they are. Arquebus, 6 1. Crossbow. Six one point five. So we we really need to get up close and personal to even be equal to a crossbow. So why is the arquebus replacing the crossbow? Because they're easier to make. I think it's just a metal tube, right? It's just a metal tube, and uh, it was easier to train the men to uh, fire them than it was to train a guy to use crossbows. Definitely longbows. You got. They had to be raised as a child to uh, be a proper longbowman. So that is really why the arquebus 
uh, and it took over the battlefield, replaced the crossbow. Mostly replaced the crossbow. Well, we're going to screen. That's what these skirmishers are for. They're going to come down here like that. And now we're going to move in. But we're moving in crossbowmen. Do we have anybody? Halberd. And Halberd. We got 800 Halberd. This is not going to stand up to the Swiss. But you might as well learn firsthand, right? Just how good the Swiss are. So let's form the line down here. Uh, let's turn that. We can ch change to line. Clockwise. And now the, I think we want to, well, we have to move him in here like this. And then we'll move him down and turn him clockwise. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks good, right? And then our guns. He's still setting up. Okay, so it's more than one turn to set up the big guns. Right. And if anything, we want to start pulling our line back towards our guns so that we can get their assistance, especially when the enemy guns are on top of us. Uh, things, things are looking, uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know how this is going to go. Quality D, quality E troops up against A. A, a plus. Yeah. Well, we should see the difference that uh, the quality rating makes. Definitely here in the turns to come. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it for uh, movement and fire. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I think there is a way to hit next stack. Yeah, I didn't move them. But I didn't because I don't know what to do with them. Where would they be handy? Well, basically, we got to wait for uh, our infantry to open up a hole. Uh, we already have cavalry over here that's going to be trying to flank. I don't see anywhere else on the battlefield. I mean, we do have a lot of cavalry here. I could send them down here, but I don't. I just don't see the point. Uh, how are we doing here? Everybody's in command range. The army commander will come down. One more. One more. You get a little bit closer. And them, and the Dragoons, they have not fired. I don't see the point of trading fire with these 399 men. We're just holding the line. So we're going to try to melee into the crossbow and see what happens. All right, so next turn, melee. Here we go. How do these quality E, no line, no block, halberd, Worth six victory points. How good can they do against 281 disordered crossbow infantry? We are about to find out right now. <clears throat> okay, so we have a strong advantage as the attacker. We have 220 points and an effective defending force of 62. It would be nice if on this screen uh, it would actually show all the modifiers that are... Um, Affecting these stats, these the, the strengths, it'd be nice, it'd be make it a lot easier for me to learn how to uh, how the game works. Because I mean, I kind of got it with I got the just you know the basics of it, but I don't have it all. I know that I don't understand exactly how all that's happening. It'd be so nice to actually see the modifiers. If not before the battle, maybe that's part of the game. Is you have to figure this stuff out for yourself, but. It, at the very least, it could show in the results of the combat, like, you know, where it shows the casualties it's about to do. Uh, it would also show you the information of why those casualties, like all the, all the modifiers that took place. That makes it so much easier for me to wrap my head around uh, how to, uh, you know, master these games. All right, so we're going to, anyways, for now, we know we have a strong advantage, 220 to 62. 
Let's hit the button and see what happens. They get to shoot at us first, kill 18 men. That's great. Oh, all right, I need to actually resolve the melee. All right, so we're gonna resolve it. We push down, you can hear that basically puts us so that the pikemen can attack us on our flank. So, not really the greatest, I don't think. Uh, but it is a result of one that was right now positive for us. So, the Kingdom of Naples is happy. Uh, and I think that is the skirmishers. I don't think they should melee. I, I don't think that would be a great idea. Uh, well, you know what? They're not worth much. Let's try. Nope. Attached units cannot melee attack. Right, right. They're detached. Because their parent unit is right here. And I think you need to be within three of the parent unit to not be detached. Or is it skirmishers the same as the rest? They just have to be within the commander's command range. That might be it, too. Uh, so that is it for melees. So we are done. The uh, Kingdom of Naples and Spanish's turn. And that will conclude the video for the day. So yeah, no, I'm. I mean, obviously it's a mess, but war is war is dirty. Uh, but yeah, if I really think that if you could see a little bit more under the hood, I know that the computer, all those calculations are being done anyways. It's not like it would be a lot of work to just show them, just show them to us, so that. And if you're supposed to figure it out when you're before the combat, I understand that. But at least after the combat, show us how it works so that new players such as myself can learn how it all fits together. Uh, that's really important to me anyways. I, I love to know. I want to know how things work. And uh, it's a little obtuse right now trying to figure all this stuff out. You, you go in the manual, but with, with the tool tips... Right, since they've been invented, and I know they, I know there are some, because for example, if you click on this unit here, and then you hold down the shift key and click on a hex, you, there, look, right there is a range. So I know they can do them. Like something like that pops up, shows you what modifiers are going to happen when you attack. Like that would, that would work great. Anyways, uh, next time we'll be back with turn six. And uh, the Swiss will start to get into action. And we'll see if we can really put a pounding on this. And we'll see if hopefully these rally. All kinds of things we'll see. Uh, but until then, take care, guys. And have a great night.